Hey, good morning, Grace Baptist Church. So thankful to be with you this morning to open up the Word of God. Uh, today we're going to look at a uh, Sunday school vacation Bible school staple. We're going to look at Jesus feeding the 5,000. And I'm excited to see what we can learn this morning uh, as Jesus teaches us that He alone can satisfy, that He can take people who have a willing heart and He can use people with a willing heart to accomplish great things. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time we have together this morning in your Word. Father, I pray. Uh, that you would open our eyes, help us to understand uh, what you would have us to understand this morning, not just to have the knowledge, Lord, but so that you can transform us uh, for your glory and for our good. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this morning we're looking uh, at Matthew's Gospel. We're going to be Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to begin at verse 13 and go through verse 21. And the point that I have for you this morning is that only Jesus can satisfy your greatest need. Only Jesus can satisfy your greatest needs. So this morning, as you think about your needs, what needs that are that you have that are pressing this morning? It could be a financial need, could be a health need, could be a relationship need, uh, it just could be emotional distress that you feel like needs to be taken care of. What is your greatest need? And my question for you also this morning is, are you satisfying that need in the things of this world? Or are you seeking to satisfy your needs in Jesus. So ask yourself this morning, am I satisfied in Jesus? So as we look at Jesus feeding the 5,000, obviously we see that Jesus is concerned about our temporal needs. And Jesus is concerned about us having a place to live, uh, us having food to eat, us having clothes to wear, us, um, you know, us having good health. I mean, Jesus is concerned about those things. Um, we don't want to over-spiritualize this. Uh, and so that's my first point this morning. Jesus is concerned to satisfy your basic material needs. Let's look at the text, Matthew 14. Uh, when Jesus had heard what had happened, about John the Baptist there he's speaking, when Jesus had heard about what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place so that he could pray. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick, right? So Jesus is there along the Sea of Galilee. The crowd is following him around because he's performing all kinds of miracles, and they want to be around Jesus. He has quite the crowd following him. In Matthew's uh, and Mark's gospel, Mark's account, uh, as Jesus heads to the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he sees all these people. And in Mark 6, 34, we read, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things, right? So in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus sees the people. He sees that they need to be healed. He sees that they have physical infirmities. And what does he do? He doesn't ignore that. He doesn't neglect that. He heals them. He heals the sick. And again, those healings were to validate his messianic uh, his messianic identity, right? Certainly he was he cared about them. He had compassion on them, but they validated who he is as the Messiah. But he also began to teach them, right? Because he knew they had a, a physical need, but he knew their greatest need was a spiritual need. He sh saw them as sheep without a shepherd. Their spiritual leaders had failed them. Their spiritual leaders hadn't led them into the word of God. Uh, they were ignorant to God's true desires for them. And so Jesus began to teach them because their greatest need really is a spiritual need. So yes, Jesus is concerned about our physical needs. I think it's fine to pray, right? Jesus says, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Right? We need to pray about our physical needs because Jesus cares about it. All right? But he cares more about our spiritual needs. He's most concerned about our greatest need, that we would be fully satisfied in God no matter what our circumstance is. All right, so let's continue in the text. Jesus sees the crowd on the shore. He begins to heal them, and he's there for a long period of time. And in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 14, we read this. As evening approached, the disciples came to Jesus and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves something to eat, something to eat some food. Jesus replied, uh, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. I can't imagine the look on their faces when Jesus said, Hey, you give them something to eat. They're hungry, yes, but I want you to feed them. right? In John's Gospel, in John's account of this, 
Uh, there's a parenthetical statement where John writes, Jesus asked this only to test them, right? Jesus was testing the disciples here. Jesus was testing their faith, right? So we see two things going on, right? Jesus is going to tell us that our greatest spiritual need is him, and only he can satisfy that. But he's also, there's a, an underlying lesson that's going on there for the disciples. You know, Jesus is going to send the disciples out with the saving message of, of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That message, the gospel, is the message that will feed the hungry who need salvation. But as the disciples go, they're going to need to trust in that message, and they're going to need to trust that Jesus Christ alone can satisfy and meet all their needs as they go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we look at this passage, we need to understand that as we follow Jesus, he's going to ask us to do things that are far beyond our ability or our uh, capacity to accomplish what he's called us to do. Jesus is going to call us into great work, but he's going to ask us to do things that we feel like we have no ability to accomplish. He's going to ask us to do things that only he can accomplish through us. So as we look at the text in verse 17, after Jesus asks them to feed the, the 5,000, their response is this, We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. So the disciples, after having seen Jesus heal the multitudes, I mean, literally, creating life where there was no life after seeing that their faith was being tested and their response was look we don't we don't have and so really the point here is Jesus doesn't want us to focus on what we don't have on what we can't do Jesus wants us to focus on him let me say that again Jesus says this don't focus on what you don't have or what you can't do rather focus on what I can do with the little that you have, right? Jesus knows that you're not able. Jesus knows that you don't have what you need to accomplish what he's called you to do. Jesus knows that only he can satisfy, only he can accomplish great things through you. Well, you might say this morning, well, you know, you don't know how empty and unusable I feel. I have nothing to offer, right? Or sometimes we're there as Christians, right? We're so busy just trying to live life, like the circumstances of life that just weighed us down and, and we failed in our sin yes we've repented but we just feel unusable well friends Jesus wants a willing heart right Jesus wants a willing heart he wants somebody that's willing to serve him and he'll take what little you have and he'll accomplish great things let's go back to the text right so the, the disciples say look all we have all we have here are five loaves and two fish what does Jesus say in verse 18 he says Bring those fish and loaves to me, he says. Bring them here to me. And then he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, he broke the loaves, and he gave them to the disciples. It's amazing here as Jesus begins to feed the 5,000, the description that Matthew gives, and Mark gives the same description, that he gave thanks, broke the bread, and he gave it to them. It's the same wording almost verbatim that he uses at the Lord's Supper. That the death, that his life that he was about to render on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, was going to be what was going to satisfy. And that was going to be the message they were going to take to the nations, right? So Jesus broke the loaves, he gave thanks, okay? He gave, he gave the, the food to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the people, right? So this is a miracle of creation. Jesus is creating um, essentially out of nothing. Yes, he has the, 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 the loaves and the fish, but he's just multiplying them, right? And so he's serving people fish that have never, they've never swam or swum in the water, however you say it. They never swam in the water, right? Bread that never had to begin as grain that grew in a field. It never had to be ground up into flour. It never had to be, you know, mixed with water and oil and kneaded. So he creates fish and bread out of nothing. Right? and had to have been the best fish and bread ever eaten. Well, they distribute that to the people, and it says in verse 20, they all ate and they were satisfied. And then the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number who ate 
was about 5,000 men, right? So you can really take that number, 5,000, and at least double it, maybe even triple it, because you add wives, children, etc., that may have been with them. The number of those who ate it was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. You know, as we look at Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus out of the, the, the few loaves and fish that they have, we see here clearly that Jesus specializes in taking willing nothings and transforming them into great somethings to accomplish his task on earth for his glory. Let me say that again. Jesus specializes in taking willing nothings and transforming them into great somethings to accomplish his task here on earth for his glory. You may feel like a nothing right now. You may feel like you have nothing to offer God, nothing to offer Jesus, nothing to offer the church. But God's not concerned about what you don't have. He's concerned about what he can do through you if you have a willing heart. And so let me plead with you this morning. Don't, don't, don't use your lack of material possessions. Don't use your lack of experience. Uh, don't use your broken past as an excuse not to serve Jesus and to attempt great things. Don't use your age, okay? Don't use uh, your infirmity to think that you can't accomplish great things for Jesus. You think that he doesn't understand the situation you're in? He does. Jesus specializes in taking willing nothings, okay, and, and, and turning them or transforming them into great somethings to accomplish his task here on this earth for his glory and for our good. The feeding of the 5,000 teaches us to welcome obstacles as opportunities for God's power to be displayed through our inability. Right? Jesus, he loves obstacles, right? Because when he, there's an obstacle there, it just gives him an opportunity to show his glory, to manifest the glory of the Son of God. And he wants to do that through you. He wants to do that through me. What great potential we have. Friends, if we have a pulse, okay, there's potential there. Jesus can take a nothing and a nobody and transform you into somebody, into something, not for your glory, but for his glory, and to accomplish his task on earth. God isn't looking for great people to accomplish great things. Rather, he's looking for willing people through whom he can accomplish great things. God is looking for willing people that he can use so this morning, what are your excuses? What are your excuses for not attempting, attempting great things for God? God wants you to attempt great things for Him. And He can take what little you have and accomplish great things. So that's really the lesson for the disciples, for many of us who are in the church. It could be uh, that you're not a Christian, right? There's a deeper spiritual lesson here that Jesus wants to convey to us. In John's Gospel, John chapter 6, he helps us to understand really the deeper spiritual message that's going on. Um, you know, most people in the world are looking for satisfaction in things that aren't God, right? God's created us with this innate, this instinctual desire to seek Him. And the nature of sin is that sin causes people to seek satisfaction in that which is not God. That's why we have idolatry. Uh, that's right, why people seek to find satisfaction in sex and drugs and multiple relationships and in money and success, right? They're, you know, they're, they're, they're looking to satisfy this longing that can only be satisfied in God, right? The Augustinian axiom is true. Augustine said, Lord, make me restless till I find my rest in you, right? And Jesus wants the people to find their rest in him, their satisfaction in him, to be fulfilled in him alone, right? In that context there at the Sea of Galilee, as people were following Jesus around, they were looking to have their physical needs met. That was their satis that was what they thought would satisfy them. They were looking to have their temporal needs met and being and being fed, right? This isn't the only time that Jesus is going to feed people, right? But they were blind to their greatest need. The world is blind to its greatest need. Only God can satisfy the longing of the world. Only God can satisfy your greatest need and my greatest need. And John chapter 6 gives us the spiritual explanation of what Jesus was accomplishing here as he feeds the 5,000. As Jesus feeds them, actually, let me explain the context. So Jesus feeds the 5,000, then the next day they look for him again. They think he's going to feed them again, right? And so this is the day after he feeds the 5,000. Okay, and they, they're looking for Jesus, and John chapter 6, verse 25 says this, When they found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? 
Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. He says, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Right? Jesus says, You're looking for the wrong thing, right? And really, he's hearkening back to the wilderness wanderings of God's children in, in the desert there of Israel, of, of, of southern Israel, uh, or of, of Egypt. They were looking and longing for satisfaction. God fed them bread from he heaven, but they ate the manna, and once they ate it, they would get hungry again, right? And Jesus says, look, you're looking for something that's, you know, you want to be satisfied, but these, these physical things, you're going you're gonna to find a little bit of satisfaction in them, but then you're going to be hungry again. Right? He says, don't work for food that spoils, but work for the food that gives eternal life. In verse 32, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you this bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread from God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He's referring to himself. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Friends, only Jesus can ultimately satisfy you. The things of this world may satisfy you for a little while, but you will end up empty. Jesus alone is the bread of life. Jesus alone can satisfy your greatest need. Your greatest need is to have your sins taken away and to receive eternal life. That God would give you a new heart and new desires, a right relationship with him. The psalmist says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus calls us to taste and see that he alone can satisfy us and meet our greatest need. So if you're not a believer, your greatest need is Jesus. Only he can satisfy that. Only he can take away your sins. Only he can grant you eternal life. Only he can satisfy your greatest longings. If you're a Christian... If this morning you know you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you want to serve the Lord, just remember that Jesus specializes in taking willing nothings and transforming them into great somethings to accomplish his task on earth for his glory. Jesus wants to use you. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on all that Jesus is and all that Jesus can do. And I promise you, you will be satisfied. Well, Grace, it's been great being with you this morning. So thank for the, for these times that we have together. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for me. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be together this morning. Thank you for this wonderful narrative that you've recorded for us where your son feeds the 5,000 and all that that means for us. Father, help us to understand that we can only ever be truly satisfied in Jesus Christ alone. In his name I pray. Amen. All right, Grace, I love you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.